as somebody that missed out on the original Citizen Brick Breaking Bad figures. It was really awesome when they released their Heisenberg figure in the last year and another cool set of custom figures and actually a mini Lego set. I thought this Breaking Bad set by SJ Bricks was, you know what, a pretty unique product. And while it's not always my favorite to get these classic figures, it is kind of fun when you get them together in a little scene like this. It works a lot better than just having these figures separately, but even just having these figures doesn't really scratch the itch for the Breaking Bad universe. There's a lot of fun little characters that have cool designs and of course I wanted more than just these figures I have here which brings us into the review today being the Ernest Lawyer by Jocka Bricks which is part of their Jocka Light line which basically just means that these figures are a little less detailed and have a little less printing. See this figure is not going to have any leg printing and honestly these figures aren't that much cheaper but it is nice to get a figure for less than a hundred dollars. But Saul here isn't my first Jocka Brick figure I've reviewed because I had the pleasure of getting these Old Man Logan figures and reviewing these a couple of months ago. And I was very impressed with the quality. Printing on these figures is really great. They have some really cool custom molded parts. My one complaint really was that this hair piece is way too tight and is difficult to get off of the figure. We'll see if that ends up being a problem today. But again, you know, I love that packaging. I like Really appreciate the presentation for a figure, so it's always cool to see cool packaging methods. Jocka, though, isn't the only company being reviewed in this video. I also have the Better Call Saul 3 pack by Classic Minifigs with a couple different suits and costumes from throughout the show. I just thought it'd be fun to pick these up and kind of compare them to the expensive version of the character. Because in this case here, you can get three custom printed figures for the same price as the Jocka Light version of Saul. We'll have to check these out and see how the value compares. Just starting out with the packaging for the Jocka figure, it does have a carded packaging design, but unlike other companies that might do something like this, you are actually able to reuse this just by sliding out the card instead of ripping it off. So that's really nice to see. And the figure is just loose in it, which is a little disappointing probably. I would have liked to have seen it in the bag or something to secure it and prevent the printing from being damaged in some way. But even the classic minifigs figures don't fare much better with three loose figures altogether. So for both of these, that's a little knock on them is just having parts loose and shaking around during shipping, I'm sure. We'll have to see if there was actually any damage to these. I'm assuming there won't be, so it's not a big deal, but that's something to keep in mind. I do really like getting these plastic cases from Classic Minifigs. These are very nice and reusable for storage, but let's kind of go through these figures in chronological order, starting with just the suit version of Jimmy McGill for the first Jimmy figure. You know, it's just a pretty typical suit. I do like the dark metallic color that they used from Lego's inventory. Definitely matches the sheen of certain fabrics. And this is just a pretty decent design for a suit overall. Also comes with just a Lego briefcase, which is a nice accessory. One downside, no back printing for the torso, which is fine if you're just displaying the figures. The hair piece that is Kind of that comb over introduced with the Lego movie and the Larry the Barista is pretty fitting for the character. And the downside for a lot of the classic minifigs figures for me is the face. I'll say that this isn't the worst face design that I've seen, but it just doesn't have a lot of life to it without the pupils and nothing really about this design screams Bob Odenkirk for me or even Saul Goodman, the character. It's just a guy in a suit, especially for this version of the character, but torso design is pretty good, honestly, for using anywhere. It's not stylized enough that it's not compatible with other designs or clothing. So that's good to see. Let's move on to the next character in this set. 
And right here, some potential spoilers for Better Call Saul. If you haven't seen it yet, we have Jimmy McGill from the Bay Man episode. This one does feature some back torso printing, which is nice. The front has some blood splatter from some of the different cartel members that were around him during a shootout. The accessory right here is really nice, being the world's best lawyer again cup, which was given to him by Kim Wexler in the show when he got his license reinstalled again. Earlier in the show, he ended up getting the original world's best lawyer coffee cup when he got a new job. So it's a little nice reference to the show having this. And I think this is my favorite part of the set is just this accessory here. For the head, you can see it's on a tanner part with some lighter flesh printed around the eyes and mouth, which is pretty accurate to the show where he ended up getting probably sunburned a bit and just dirt from being in the desert. The bandages around the head also works as a shirt or whatever you wrapped around his head just as shade. And you know what? This suit again is pretty useful. I would say you could go through with an eraser and get rid of the blood if you really wanted to. This is a good representation of the character from the episode. Again though, probably would have preferred the pupils and maybe a bit more of a detailed face, but when you're going with classic minifigs that's not going to happen. And this is probably one of the more iconic storylines from the show, but this was really only an outfit in one or two episodes, so it's too bad to see a spot taken up by this. But it is very unique, and there's a really good chance that no other company would make a figure representing this scene from the show. So if you're, if you're a big fan of Better Call Saul, I could definitely see you wanting something like this. Let's move on to the last figure of this set. And for this last one is Gene Takovic. And conceptually, this figure is really interesting but because it is black and white grayscale, like the scenes in the show, you're not gonna be able to use this as easily with the rest of your collection. You can see that it has a little bit of white skin showing at the top of the print there. So if you put a flesh or yellow head on this character, it's gonna look a little off maybe. I guess it could be a white undershirt so it probably does have some use, but I can't think it's kind of stuck in this design. I think the glasses look pretty good on this and the dark gray versus the black blends together pretty well and stands out, which is good. You know, those prints are pretty close to each other. So I could definitely see them kind of canceling each other out and making some of the details not stand out that much. And for this one, I guess his black hair works pretty well. At this point in the show, he's balding pretty bad. And this is kind of fun, you know, if you could get past that sort of skin color at the top there. This is just a nice apron print that could be used for a store of some sort if you could figure out somewhere to put it. But no accessories with this one. It would have been fun to get a Cinnabon box or really anything. But again, just like the Bagman figure, this is a very unique version of Saul Goodman, Jimmy McGill, that maybe another company never would tackle. So it's nice to get this option. And that wraps up on the classic minifigs, Saul Goodman figures. Let's jump on into the Jocko one. Getting this one on the stand. And this is kind of the final step in the character evolution, finally being Saul Goodman. And this is a perfect blend of simplicity, but also detailing where I could definitely see Lego printing something pretty close to this with the suit detailing. You can see some fun little details like the little pin ribbon that a lot of the characters ended up wearing in the show after the airplane crash, spoiler. And even going to the back, you can see that on the hip piece, there is some additional printing continuing that suit jacket down. But other than that, you know, it is a little bit simple. No shoe printing at all. I know a lot of customizers, especially at the more detailed level, print 
some crease lines down the legs, or even just having cuff link printing on the arms or something would have been cool, but it is a light figure. But even at a lower price point, this is still a 60 plus dollar figure. With that being said though, it still does have a custom molded piece. So this hair is unique to the figure and works very well. Face print is also a great resemblance and pretty much matches the Saul Goodman meme. Try and get the hair piece off. Like I mentioned, sometimes they're a little bit harder to get off, especially with one hand. But this one wasn't super bad. On the back is a more concerned facial expression. Getting that hair back on and that works very well too. Quick rotating that around. And man, what a great Saul Goodman figure. I'm really glad to have this and continue my Breaking Bad collection. And it's not always the best to cross brands over, but this Heisenberg by Sins and Brick has some pretty decent detailing. I think these two fit together pretty well. But now I feel like I really need a Jesse and of course a Gus and a Mike. It just goes on and on and on. But it's great to have at least one other character so I can put these two together in a display. And this is the normal gray version. I actually ended up getting a couple of the different color variants for this figure, so I'll throw those on quick. The first one I'll show off is the white version of the suit. And for these variants, basically it is just the exact same printing, just on different colored parts. So this is on a white torso and legs instead of the dark gray. And you can see it still works really well with the black lines, the same shirt. The head and the hair are the exact same. I just thought a white suit could be useful for a different character. So that's kind of cool to see. And it's always fun to get some variants, especially something like a suit where you can really throw that around on the different characters. And it's not super character specific, especially for the last version that I bought, having a red suit. I thought this was a really great looking figure and might go really well with a certain lawyer vigilante. So after I find a good head for a Matt Murdock, I'll definitely throw it on this torso and leg set, which would free up this head and hair. So I'll see what this looks like on one of those classic minifig torsos. And honestly, this is a pretty good figure solution as well. Definitely see him wearing this, standing in the mirror saying it's showtime. So. Overall, you know what? It's kind of cool to get all the different suits, different versions of this character. It's nice not all of them are the exact same. That ends up happening with some different companies where they just choose the same iconic look and just make it over and over and over again. The variety is nice here, especially for classic minifigs. Honestly, they made a lot of interesting figures that, like I said, you know what? Could just be the only option for those. But let's do some vinyl comparisons and get to the vinyl version. To me, classic style minifigures really only work together in context. So having a three pack like this Better Call Saw one here works very well in its favor. Since you have three different versions of the same character in the style, just ends up making a lot more sense conceptually. Just because, you know, this figure is just a guy in a suit and the face doesn't have anything really making it stand out as the character. So having two other different versions that are more specific to an episode definitely helps. And you know what? For the most part, all these are pretty useful parts. I do really like the accessory here. I think that would look good on the Jacka figure even. So that's something I might consider. But overall, you know what? It is fun to get three different custom minifigures for less than $20 each. And if you're a Better Call Saul fan, I think you're going to enjoy these a lot more than just the average custom consumer. And if you're going to order from Classic Minifigs, you know what? I would recommend these. I think Better Call Saul is pretty underrepresented in custom Lego. So these are some great options and give you some fun looks for, for Jimmy McGill throughout the show. And getting back to the Jocka versions of Saul Goodman. These are also pretty easy to recommend. The detailing on these are very good, and the dark gray being the base version of the figure is a good selection for the suit, and obviously 
it's the right choice since it's based off of the episode where he wears it. Another one of the variants was that dark metallic silver one that we saw on the classic minifigures figure where they use that same color of torso and legs. And it's probably a little bit more accurate to the suit in the episode. But at the time of the figure being announced and everything, we didn't know that that was going to be coming out. If I did know that, I probably would have bought that version and not the gray one. But since I had already bought the gray one, I didn't feel like I needed another gray suit. But I am very happy with the two variants I did get. The red one, like I said, is going to be great for Daredevil. That's my plan for that one. And the white one, we'll see. I think a white suit like this is going to be pretty good to have. And honestly, I thought this was just something that Saul would end up wearing at some point for being a little bit more expensive. It's kind of weird that you can get this one figure for the same price as the three that I already showed off, but that's just kind of the overseas custom minifigure market. Makes sense, I guess, if you're custom molding, that takes a lot of resources and money. And for being a light figure, I feel like this could probably be even cheaper. 60 still seems pretty high. Maybe 50 to upper 40 would be a better price for this, just because there's nothing really on here that Citizen Brick wouldn't print. But I'm pretty happy having a really detailed face like this. Likeness is great. Hair is great. And if you can pick this one up for a pretty reasonable price compared to the market value, I would recommend it. And having all of these figures together is a fun little evolution of the character from Jimmy McGill to Gene Takovic, Saul Goodman. And it's nice, you know, sometimes just having characters in suits and being a little boring, but in this specific case, it's nice to have a variety of different pieces to use for different scenarios. If you want to customize in any way or fig barf, I think that's way better than just having, like I said, the same version of the character made by several different companies. And it's nice that he provides a pretty nice wardrobe to go from and choose and pick little fun things that you want to put on a figure. I think any one of these is going to be good on their own. The classic minifigs might be better together just because it provides the context of what you're looking at. Honestly, if you build a little scene of a Cinnabon or some sort of desert scenery, I think people will pick up on what they're looking at. And this is definitely a knockout figure, which it should be for the higher price point. But let me know which one of these is your favorite. And if you want to see more custom LEGO reviews or any other LEGO videos, check out all the other ones on my channel. I've been Brick Radio, and I'll see you in the next video.